So how much more expensive is Crossover now? Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm very excited to announce that Crossover 22 has now been released. So in my previous video about Crossover 22 beta, I did cover some of the brand new features of Crossover 22. And these include a brand new user interface, which is going to be much more intuitive to use. And also we have compatibility with newer Windows games, for example, the AAA title Control, which is now playable thanks to a vastly improved Wine D3D backend. And now games like Rocket League work great with Wine D3D and Crossover 22 fixes some of the visual bugs with this game. We also have some pretty big updates to the back end including an upgrade to 1.7.7 and Molten VK gets an upgrade to 1.1.10. I'll also be doing some game benchmarking and testing between Crossover 21 and 22. We'll be looking at why players are being banned from GTA Online when using Crossover 22 and also some potential fixes. I'm also going to talk about the fairly big price increase and how to get the best value out of Crossover. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So a couple of weeks ago, Crossover did announce that they're going to be increasing prices and this is due to inflation. And pricing has gone up, but possibly not as much as I thought it might. So earlier this year, Crossover did cost $59. And now this has increased to $74. So this represents an increase of 25%. Interestingly, Crossover Life, which is the lifetime subscription, has actually reduced in price by $6. So you're getting a bargain there. So the way that I see it is that this price increase is completely justified by the cost of inflation. And it's actually far better than something like Parallels, the virtual machine software, which increased its prices by $20. Now this only represents a 20% increase. However, with Crossover, you can get a much better discount that is actually less than the original pricing from earlier in the year. So if you follow the link at the top of the description and then you scroll down and then you press the buy now button here, what you're going to see is the new price. However, if you type in the promo code Apple Gaming Wiki and then the arrow button, you're going to be able to get a 25% discount. And this actually comes out cheaper than the original pricing from earlier in the year. Also, once you've made a purchase, you can go into your account and then go to my account here. If you click on support licenses and then you find your current license and click renew now, you'll be able to get $40 off your renewal price too. You can also do this renewal multiple times and renew many years into the future at a discounted rate. Just remember to come back to our affiliate link as we'll receive a small commission for every purchase and renewal. So you've upgraded your version of Crossover and you're ready to try out some games. So how does it actually perform and do the 10,000 improvements to Wine make any difference at all? So one of the things I was really looking forward to in Wine 7 and above is the fact that 32-bit games are going to run slightly better. So games like Star Wars The Old Republic are still running a 32-bit engine. And as you can see on the right hand side, we're getting a consistently higher frame rate and also substantially less stutter as well. Now the performance isn't amazing considering we're running this on the M1 Max chip and it's quite an expensive machine. However, the performance is improved, however incremental it is. So next up is Grand Theft Auto 5. And this is obviously the Windows version of the game running through Crossover. And it performs quite well, especially if you compare it to something like Parallels, which is a virtual machine software. Crossover is able to access far more of the system's resources and doesn't have the overhead of running a Windows 11 operating system in the background. And if we look at the performance of Crossover 22, it is very slightly better than Crossover 21.2. Now it can be a little bit hard to see in this benchmark. So what we're gonna do is to slow down the benchmark here to 25% speed. Here you can see that for basically every frame, we're getting around a five to 10% increase in frame rate in Crossover 22. So it's nice to see that we can get some performance improvements from these big open world games, especially GTA 5, as people still love to play this game on the Mac. However, if you're interested in playing GTA Online, then unfortunately I have some bad news. Some players have reported that playing on Crossover 22 beta has resulted in a ban. Code Weavers recommend that you do a full reinstall of Crossover. However, the safest thing is to probably just revert back to 21.2 when you want to play GTA Online. So despite this minor regression, Crossover 22 is still a big improvement over Crossover 21. And it's great to see that Code Weavers are ever expanding the number of games that are playable on Apple Silicon hardware. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.